Hey guys, Dave here, and in today's video, I'm going to be uh, joined by Mark Knowles of Bar42. Say hi. Hi. And uh, as my YouTube channel is usually a guitar channel, uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be advice to all musicians and for bands who are wanting to take their music careers seriously. Um, so you've got a few tips for well, musicians. A few. A yeah. few, yeah, just a few. Um, so we'll just get straight into it. So uh, do you want to start off with your first tip? The first tip is uh, basically to go to other gigs. Um, it's quite staggering how many people, I think we all know it as well, actually, if we're honest, how many people don't go to other gigs. They only go to their own gigs. Um, it's not, that's not, you know, the, the, the crowd, the audience has to start from the musicians and the people that are doing it. You know, either because they love it or because they want to do it for a living there comes a certain point where you don't have to go to gigs because you are actually a, a professional musician and you don't have to but at the start you you do have to you have to kind of like build the scene that you want to kind of thrive in really because otherwise there is no scene at all and then you have to start trying to find the scene it's just easier to do it in your hometown yeah, so it's networking 101. Just go to gigs, make friends with the other bands playing, and and if it's if it becomes a bit of a bind to do that, then you're probably in the wrong business. You know, if if you don't want to, you know, you don't get footballers not watching football because they don't really like it. <laughs> you know, yeah. they go home and then they watch football. They watch other teams and 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 they gain their knowledge from that. They even you know the professional footballers even go home and play like FIFA or something on their Xbox because um, they just love the game so much and, and, and it's kind of weird I think that musicians don't seem to do that they seem to people seem to study it um, they seem to tell everybody how much they love music but then when it actually comes to the crunch they actually don't actually want anybody else's music other than their own and um, the, the people that I've seen that are most successful that have come through here have been the people that go to other people's gigs and network and and then and yeah some of them do it some of them do it because they feel like they have to because it's part of the game other people do it because they just love it they just love going to gigs and they love seeing bands they love being surprised by bands even if it's just one song or or the vibe in a gig or something like that um and and if you don't love it then you're not going to be able to make a living at it because there's going to be a lot of sitting around i mean even at this level we've got bands coming in tonight at half six um the band coming in at half six for sound check are going to play at ten so they've got a lot of waiting around to do. As you go up the up, you know, up the scale, you're doing earlier sound checks and waiting for longer. You know, longer journeys between gigs as well. Exactly. Uh, a lot of this gigging business is just waiting around. So yeah, it is. So you, so you you've got to really want to do it. So again, I don't expect um, sort of like touring bands. You know, like when we have monuments here and they sat in their in their van, in their tour bus for the first two bands, they'd probably already seen them because they're all on tour together. You know, they were just having a bit of a downtime, that's fine. But I think early on, you should be wanting to take an interest in the other people's music and the other band's music, because that's about networking as well, especially if they're from out of town. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, my, uh, my band actually, uh, we, need, we always make sure that there's the, at least a couple of us watching every single band at every gig that we play. And if there's like only one of us, then we'll jump on the band group chat and be like, get inside and watch the other bands. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we're on each other to make sure we're watching all the other bands and supporting everyone. That's right. So, and that can feel like work sometimes, and that can feel definitely. You know, that it can feel like you don't want to because if you're at a gig and they're not really playing the music that you like, or then they're, they're not very good, maybe even um, it can feel like work, and nobody really wants to feel like that when you're at a gig. But you've got to force yourself, and that's a really good way of doing it. You've got five people in your band, so two of them go in. And exactly. Then, and then the other bands can't complain because there are people watching. And then when there's a really good band, you're all in there watching because you all want to watch the really good band. But if there's a bit of a bad, a terrible band, at least you've got a representation um, from that. It obviously s stops the negative stuff as well from circulating about your yeah. band, yeah. Um, which is important. But yeah, oh yeah, we've we've kind of just like totally just written off some bands for not watching the other bands at a gig. We we won't play with them again just because they won't support any of the other bands. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's something. You know, I, I understand that when you've played a gig and you're all hot and sweaty, especially in here, and you go outside for a drink and it's nice and there's another band playing and stuff. Um, I understand that you don't want to. I, I understand that you might not want to. Um, again, we, we get into that hobbyist thing, are we? The hobbyist or the band doing it for a living. You know, mm -hmm. there is a difference, isn't there? The hobbyist, are they gonna be, be the people that come down here, just wanna be on stage, play? Um, 
with their mates around and stuff and then there's the people that are doing it for a living where you've got to take it a little bit more seriously and the networking you don't have to network as a hobbyist you don't have to do you yeah. you'll get a lot more gigs if you do but it's not actually going to affect you because it's only your hobby but for a person doing it for a living you've got to do that sure yeah the, these tips are specifically for people who want to take their band to the like next level it's not so if you're in a band and you're just doing it for the fun of it and you're not wanting to get anywhere then obviously uh, these tips are not going to be yeah. applicable to you too much um, obviously it's nice to follow them but yeah I, I think if you're if you're a hobbyist really young sort of like 18 19 and you're doing it for a hobby then by the time you're 23 you probably won't be doing it again because yeah. other things in your life are going to take over like drinking um, um, you know sort of partners jobs life stuff if you're if you're doing it for a living those are the people that like hang on for a little bit longer um, but if you're a hobbyist I can guarantee life will get you down and then you'll go back to playing guitar or you'll go back to a band and then you'll join a band later on and then you'll kick on and then it's all too late to be famous but you yeah. can still do it for fun and we've got loads of those we've got loads of, we've got loads of bands like that where people have just not done anything for like five six years while life got in the way and then they've come back to it later and 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 some of them I mean some of them actually got to a pretty decent level you know because they were really really good but um, you know if you're not going to do it for a living at the start then it's going to life's going to take over sure Sure. Awesome. So uh, what would your second tip be? Second tip is to practice something every day. Again, if you're, I mean, I think probably hobbyists do this anyway. Yeah. Maybe not every day, but they do it a lot because they yeah. want, because naturally you want to be better at something. Yeah. Um, but for, if you're doing it for a living, you definitely have to practice something every day. Now, I don't know enough about guitar, guitar playing to know what you could practice, um, but that you have to practice. You have to be picking up your guitar every day and doing something. Um, because you're not the finished article. I don't think you ever will be. I you mean, never will be. Yeah, so you just keep keep going. Um, keep trying things out. You know, different, just different sounds. You've, you've just got to live for that guitar, really. You've got to live for, and it, it works for drums and singing, obviously, as well. Um, you've got to do... And the poor little bass players yeah, that you didn't yeah, mention. Too. Yeah, yeah, although you can do that on backing track, can't you now? <laughs> <laughs> but you can, uh, but... You've, you've got to do something every day you've got to be thinking about it every day you know you, you do need time off obviously but um, there's another point I'm going to come to later is it's, it's, it's your job basically if you're looking to do it for a job it's something your job you have to do every day if you're self-employed because, yeah. because otherwise the money doesn't come in you know sure. you, nobody's going to pay you for doing nothing so you've got to create your own you've got to generate your own wealth yeah. uh, and that's, that's difficult definitely if it's not your job yet you have to treat it like it's your job if you want it to become your job, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. so is that, do you have anything else on that topic no, or should we move on to the next it, one? Because otherwise yeah. we start talking about technicals and I don't know. And, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, so what's tip number three then? Tip number three is to try and get a job in the music scene um, around where, where you live. Um, and that's anything, part-time. So for instance, my example would be um, Harrison, who's our yeah. sound guy. Um, he works at Debenhams. Um, but then he started doing the sound here because we needed an emergency one when Lewis and um, Mike were away. So he did it and he was really good. So he'd done his little bit of apprenticeship, I suppose, where he was just filling in when they were away. And then I just decided that he's got to get a shift because he was so good. I thought he's got to get a permanent shift. So now he's permanently, he does what, one a week. Um, and the scene changes around you. Sometimes it changes for the worse. Sometimes it will change for the better. Like it is in Worthing with more venues opening up. So he's going to potentially Harrison in five or ten years time could be doing this full time sure. because he started doing one shift filling in for someone here in the, in the smallest venue in town um, and you just got to sort of hang in there and develop obviously again if life gets in the way and you can't do it or you can't fit it in um, then you might quit but if you really want to do this for a living then you've got to get in the middle of that scene so you've done it with the doing the lights here yeah you're not playing in the most of the bands that literally i i learned how to do lights just because you need yeah. a lighting person i was just like i'll, I'll do it yeah so i'll do it <laughs> and that does two yeah. things because it puts you right in the middle of a gig and uh, so you're watching other bands and listening to music live that you m maybe wouldn't go to the gig specifically Exposing for myself from yeah to new things yeah yeah and and it earns you money yeah exactly. so so if you need a certain amount of money now this is something um, obviously that becomes more difficult as you get older because as you get older you move out and then you've got lots of rent and lots of bills and stuff and then you need a lot of money um, so it becomes a bit more difficult as you get older but if you're still living at home and you're still sort of in and around that and you, 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 your outgoings are relatively low then you've got to do it then 
do it then because they're the, they're the days when you can afford, they're the weeks you can afford to earn 160 quid a week or, or something like that from various different ways. You can't do that when you're older because you need to be earning more than that Definitely. and you need to have something a little bit more um, sort of consistent. But if you're, if, you're, if you're young and you're still living at home, you can give it a go and then hopefully when you come to move out, you've, you've got a number... Basically, what you need is a number of fingers in pies, don't you? You Options. can't, you can't yeah. be earning all your money from one thing. Yeah. You know, you've got your music, but you've also got the, all the peripheral things. That's uh, it. And, and that's what Harrison's doing. That's what you're doing. It's what Mike did. Um, Mike came to me and I sort of, I said, "Do we need another sound man?" I said, well, "Yeah, we do." And then Mike's now working at some pools, and he's doing here. You know, it's just, it's kind of ballooning for him. He does the desk recordings. He does. Uh, he come, came down here on Monday to do some re um, live recording with Lonesome Guts. So I just opened the bar so he could use it. So he's earning money from all angles. Um, and that's why he's managed to stave off that office job, which we often talk about. Yeah, I think the key in the music industry as well to making a living is to have like as many streams of income as possible. Because um, you literally can't rely on just one no, uh, it, at it, all. They, yeah. they'll, they'll drop away as well. Exactly. They will drop away. I mean, if you're, if you're doing the lights in a venue and then the venue closes, you know, that's your job. What, what, what you're doing, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you need to find another income stream but in the meantime you've got other income streams and you don't know where those income streams are going to lead i mean you, exactly. could, you could easily leave here and go and do lights in a big venue where you're doing where you're earning a lot more money than you do here because we're on this little tight budget down here but once you get to another bit venue where you know it's two thousand quid for the band and it's a 400 cap like factory live that's going to be a lot more than the money you earn here because you're going to be doing a kind of a pro job rather than sort of like the learning job here in a small venue mm -hmm. Uh, and then you only need one of them, one or two of them a week and, yeah. and you're earning decent money. And I know exactly. people that are doing it and then you get other contacts, you know, from the people that are maybe installing the lights and they can, you know, program the lights and stuff and you might get to go on tours and all kinds yeah. of stuff. So you've got JJ that goes on, goes, does all the lights on, lighting on tours. Sure. You know, and he yeah. learned it at college and he got little jobs in around Brighton and now he's on tours and stuff. So it's, it's, it's really important. You don't know where you're going to end up. That's the point of it. But if you want a job in music, you might want to be a guitarist, but you might end up being a guitar tech and a, and a lighting engineer at a festival. Yeah. You know, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Again, I've got people on my Facebook that are guitarists in bands, in bands that have played here, but now they're guitar techs for big bands going on tours with them. So they're not in the limelight themselves, but they're in that environment. And I think that's... Well, yeah, I also, I also think like uh, doing that like is a great networking opportunity yeah. to be involved with lots of bigger bands and now you know these people because that's going to help your band so it is. and also even if um even if your band doesn't go anywhere you might be you might be hooking up with someone when, when a guitarist leaves then because i mean i don't know if you know that tom hingley who was in in spiral carpets his guitar tech was uh, noel gallagher okay so there's obviously there's an obvious like you can see what's happened to Noel Gallagher after that you know a couple yeah. of years after that but also if somebody leaves a band um, and they need another guitarist they'll maybe go for the nearest person the person that they know is reliable the person that guitar tech if they're good enough bang you're in you could be in that band yeah that's yeah. a really really good idea really good yeah. point yeah yeah back awesome is it, is it that yeah it's in the back door isn't it yeah that's you know? it yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So that was tip number three, wasn't it? Yeah. So we've got one more tip for you, and that is. Uh, well, we've got two more. Um, oh, we've got two more. Yeah, oh, you got five tips. Oh, I thought you had four. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. You've got to realise that it's, it's, you're self employed. Um, it's full time. It's not even full time. It's worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's something you want to do, but when you start doing something for a living, it becomes a bit of a bind. So we've done that you know we're we're in that situation now i mean i'm doing something that's way better than i've ever done i was in it and i was in offices and, and stuff and now, and now i'm doing this which is way better but it's relentless so even today i'm trying to watch the cricket um but i've still been talking to bands about gigs at the weekend plus i've been booking them for like a couple of months time plus i've been replying to emails about various bits and bobs and the arts council and all this kind of stuff and i've been doing stuff today to do with you know even though i'm trying to just watch the cricket and, I, and I'm actually sitting in the bar waiting to serve people as well so I'm working behind the bar at the same time you've got to be relentless with it it's 11, yeah. 11 hours a day for me yeah. um, and, I, and the only reason why I can do that yeah, yeah, I can do that and, and that's the reason why I don't have to go and sit in an office for 8 hours so it's kind of worth it when you're a guitarist and when you're a musician you've just got to be relentless with it yeah. and there's no there's no guarantee that it's going to work that's what's horrible about it there is no guarantee that you're ever going to make a living at this um which is really damaging on your motivation 
then knowing that when you're practicing for two hours it might not do anything yeah might make which no which is why it's important that you get jobs within the industry yeah. that are not just uh like that's right, what you want want to do primarily because yeah. that will obviously relate to the last step get you in the back door exactly. and then yeah, yeah. but will, you'll also be making a living from it, it so will be, it will be a bind at some point it will be a bind you know we've both done the lights in the back room where you just get a little bit bored halfway through because you've sort of done it a lot you know maybe by halfway through saturday or halfway through the headline on saturday you, you've just done the lights for five bands in two days it can be a bit boring but you've got to think of the money you've got to think of the jobs you could be doing instead yeah and realize actually you're in a pretty good situation um and then once you you've got to keep telling yourself that and then pushing on to the next one and it allows you to to, to give it a go you know in the future as well and then when you're looking back you'll probably look back and go i can't believe i did that you know yeah. I, I, I just certainly do that here i, I mean i was i worked four months without a day off once <laughs> you know <laughs> wow. and i just look back and go, i can't can't believe i did that yeah. but it was just every day you just got to do it mm. every day get up go to work every day you know yeah book the bands do everything all, every time um, and it's like with any job it will really there will be horrible parts of your job and I'm thinking if I was a musician this, the gap between soundcheck and gig would be the bit I'd hate most because that's the bit I actually hate here anyway yeah. as I, I'm just waiting it's long it's I want long. the gig to yeah. get going you know yeah, I want yeah. the gig to start um, and so that must be really bad for musicians uh, for me it's cleaning the beer lines I hate doing that and I have to do that every two weeks um, there's always something you're going to hate doing but even though you've got this like kind of what people think is a glamorous job, I reckon probably for famous bands, it would be media and interviews and all that kind of rubbish that you have to turn up to. Sure. You know, like magazines and all that to promote your album or whatever. You've got to do that. I reckon half of them probably hate doing that. Yeah. Um, unless they're real extrovert people, but the introverted people are going to hate doing that. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and there's always something you're going to hate doing, but you've got to do it. I, f I feel like the positives outweigh the negatives, though, which well, is why you do it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. See, I've got a lot of experience in horrible, horrible jobs and, yeah. and stuff. So, so when you're younger, you haven't got that experience. But if you have kind of worked in Tesco's or McDonald's or something like that, then just times that by 10 years or 15 years and then you don't have to go through the 15 years before you then work hard at being a guitarist or, or, or being a musician. Um, you just try and look into the future and think, imagine if I was working in a pub for 15 years. Yeah. Um, because that's, if you can do that, if you can empathize with yourself in the future, then it will help you motivate yourself today. Um, Mike's obviously worked at the Herald selling advertising. I've worked in offices and we both agree we don't want to go back. Yeah. Um, so that's why he's probably the most motivated sound man I've ever seen. Sure. Because sure. he's just, he's trying to, he doesn't he's trying to, he's trying to cycle away from that. He's, sure. he's getting dragged in and he's trying to keep away from that. And that's why he's always trying to find work and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and that's a real credit to him. Sure. So this isn't actually the point you're making, but it j you just reminded me as well of something that um, maybe could be a bonus tip right now is to kind of have a long-term vision as well, because like, in a year or even two years or probably even like five years you're not gonna get very far but it's kind of like a I will from what I've seen it's like a it's like a J curve so you're kind of like like that oh you're not making any progress but all of a sudden yeah, it gets yeah. really good but you have to like really go through those that, that long be. period of um, for, 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 for any kind of industry I think um, it's been in the right place at the right time yeah so so the thing it's the same thing as going to gigs all the time if you know, then you're going to meet people, which means if something big happens, you're likely to be right in the way of that big thing happening. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing. If you're if you're in if you're in this industry, like you you're doing the lights here, yeah. somebody needs a lighting guy, and I find out about it, I could say, oh, Dave does the lights, and then all yeah. of a sudden you've got an extra. Exactly. If you weren't here doing the lights, then that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, they so, say uh, luck is preparation meeting opportunity, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's right. So, it is. It is. And, and effort, isn't it? I yeah, think. Yeah, I think yeah. it's effort as well. you just got to got to do it and you've got to realise, I mean, like the, the gig last night, there was a lot of effort that went into that gig last night from all the bands and nobody was really here. Yeah. Um, but there was some positives that, that came out of it for me. Um, I, I said to Harrison, you know, he got paid, staff got paid. I put on a gig that I didn't really make any money out of, but I got a couple of bands out of it that I thought were really good. Um, there was probably two bands that felt like they got something out of it as well and two bands that didn't. Cool. Um, so you've just got to look at positives. If you've never done, it's, you've never done something for no reason. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that's a kind of one of them, isn't it, for a band. It's a bit of a thing for a band, isn't it, to try and cut out those 
gigs that you've done for no reason sure. and you just come yeah. out thinking well that was pointless yeah, yeah you know yeah. just try and restrict those as much yeah. as possible well uh we don't have a lot of time left so let's uh we quickly go over the, the last we, point we've got one so more. yeah um, it's about looking at other people um looking at what other people are doing so um you can look at um even if it's you're looking at a cover band or a tribute act or something like that look at what they're doing um take the positives out of that it's what i did when we were doing our refurb i went to concord and thought i want something like this um i look at other places are thinking well that's a negative i'm going to make sure we don't do that yeah um Bands can do that all the time. You can always, even if you're looking at the, the uh, an electronic indie band and you're a metal band, you can still look at what they're doing, yeah. um, professional uh, professionalism uh, so, and that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. And you yeah. can you can look what people are doing. You can you can even listen listen to what they're doing because yeah. there might be something in a in an indie band that they're doing guitar wise or drum wise that you could yeah. you, you do in a heavier band. So, so uh, my my band, we watch videos of other bands playing live, and we're like, how can we make our performances more like that? Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah and every aspect of the particular bands that you like if you can just try and steal little bits of what they do exactly. um, then that's going to help you isn't it so it is. yeah it is. it's just going to again it's just going to immerse you in all the music until it becomes second nature yeah that's, that's what we're basically saying isn't it it's, it's second nature and then you you know and you keep going up a level that's it uh, yeah. until until you get to a point where you think, feel like you're not going up you, you've got there is a there, there isn't an infinite amount of time you know you've, you've got a certain amount of time and I would say up to 30 you know even before that for sometimes if people are getting sort of married and all that kind of stuff and having kids and stuff yeah, it's life got, gets in the way life gets in the way but also your age gets in the way because obviously we know it's a bit of a, a young person's game like music and yeah. stuff um and you've, it's you've, not the be all and end all, but it, at the same it's time, quite yeah, yeah, it is quite important because you've obviously got to be able to go on tours and stuff. So it, again, yeah. the, the life thing gets in the way. Yeah, you know, the amount of bands that are really big bands that are still working in pubs and stuff is crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because they're just not big enough to earn enough money. That's it. So yeah. so if you can do it when you're young, then do it when you're young. But that's when you have motivation issues when you're young. Yeah. So it's, that's why you see the people sort of like soaring, the, the younger bands soaring, because you just know that none of them are really drinking or, or doing drugs or anything like that. They're all focused in, in one direction. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, why, they, why they go places. Um, um, and we see, we see a lot of that. We see a lot of the other type as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, that was a really, really good productive discussion, I think. Okay. Um, check out Bar 42. I'll leave a link in the description. It's uh, my favourite venue in the entire world. Yeah. Um, Good and lights. Good lights. yeah very good lights <laughs> um, yeah awesome so uh, if you like the video please click like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment let me know what you thought of the video if you have any more tips for other bands as well let me know and I'll see you in the next video